you got the color memo. I just changed. I've been in this since eight o'clock this morning when I made a run to the recycling station to empty all the cardboard out of my truck. Nice. So it's like I just changed earrings and put on makeup and here we are. I love it. It's California fall and I don't know how to dress anymore because it's I don't want to say it's freezing in the morning because all my Canadian friends will laugh at us. Tell me to confiscate my passport for saying that. But it's chilly in the morning. And when I go to work, I'm wearing like a long sleeve and a zip up. And then by the time I come home and get to join you, it's like 85 or something. Same thing today. It's like I left the house with just a sweater on, walked out to the car and went, it is freezing. It was like 47 degrees. That's chilly. And then by noon, it's 78. And so the jacket goes away and the and so there we are. Here we are. Hi. Hi. My favorite hour of the week. I had all these try to plan out the month, like our podcast month. When I plan out my social media month, I'm trying to get more and more organized. That was my, um, my goal going into fall and winter because it's very busy in my world in fall and winter. And I wanted to get as organized as possible. So I plan out all my Instagram posts and my Facebook posts. And I plan out all the people that I'm going to talk to on the game changers podcast and topics that I want to talk to you about. That's really scary. (laughs) You've seen my house and you've seen like the people that I have to take care of and the animals. And if I don't have a schedule and a plan, I don't really function. Yeah, I get that part. I remember having children and yes. And all the things. And you feel like that circus person that like is spinning the plates on all the sticks. I just, today, like all the plates broke. And it was just like, it was a day. Okay. So we're scrapping the list and we have a brand new list today. Okay. From going off the rails. Chaos is good. Right. It is. So the truth is that control is an illusion. Right. And then every now and then the universe says, I think you forgot that. So we'll just have a day where you remember. And it's funny because I'm apparently not a good listener because I've had patient after patient, bringing in all sorts of anxiety. You know how that happens? Like some months, all your like sprained ankles and some, some months frozen shoulders. And this month has been a ton of athletes with a ton of anxiety. What's up with that? I am here to listen. I don't know, because I remember (laughs) Very clearly coming back from when we were writing the pain and injury module on the airplane thinking, geez, I sure don't see very many complicated patients the way Carol was talking about. Be careful what you focus on. And then the very next day and walk the most complicated case that I had to cancel the last appointment of the day because I couldn't believe this person's history. It was like, it was that patient. I called you. (laughs) So yeah, our patients teach us things. And there's a consistent theme when it comes to anxiety and depression. So I remember that slide, the graphic that I have on that slide, where inflammation in the brain leads to anxiety and depression. So that's an anhedonia. So 25 years ago, we had the concussion protocol and emotional relax and balance. And I had this fantasy that that was going to do it. And then there was that slide. It's inflammation. That's where the detective work starts because you go looking for what's causing the inflammation is it situational anxiety so that's where the meme it's always in the history it's always in the physical 
always. Right. So what's going on in your life? How much sleep are you getting? What's going on in your life? No, really. Is everything okay at home? And their eyes go up and to the right. And they say, yeah, everything's fine. Or they go down and to the left. And they say, everything's fine. And then you get to decide what your relationship is with that person. And there are times when you let them have their lie. Yes, I know you're lying. Right. But you don't say that. You say, doesn't look like that's entirely true. Do you want to elaborate or do you want me to leave you alone? You get to choose. Right. That's just respectful. Some people just aren't comfortable sharing. For sure. And then you say, is that really true? Or do you want me to leave you alone? If we get an accurate history, it'll help me treat you more effectively. Because right now, I don't know what to treat. So is it emotional and situational? Or this week, they're a soccer player. How many practices did you have? And how many headers did you do? Okay. Football. Did you guys start contact practice this week? Yeah. Did you get hit? Duh. Okay. So we have traumatic brain injury, and you run acute forebrain and acute midbrain. So that's one kind. And then there's what else causes inflammation? I got a stomach bug. I have a cold. I know I'm not supposed to eat gluten, but everybody had pizza on Friday and now it's Monday. And so there, there's, it's just different. And you're right. Our patients teach us things. Right. And take us out of our comfort zone. Totally. And, and you're welcome. Yeah, I was just going to say, and you're welcome. It's funny because last week we talked a lot about when scarring isn't really scarring, like when the scarring and the adhesion protocols aren't working, is it because we didn't treat the cause and the tr- cause was actually trauma from something being torn or broken. And I feel this week in the last seven days, I have learned a lot about the emotional components, the anxiety. We have a very big race coming up this weekend. It's Ironman in Sacramento. I've been inundated with triathletes the last month and they're a special breed and all you triathletes listening, I love you. You're crazy. It's managing that anxiety component. Now their anxiety is healthy, right? Any athlete, police officer, military, first line, emergency personnel have that healthy, I don't say healthy. They have that high functioning level of anxiety where they're getting through their day and they need to be spring loaded at all times. But when that tips, then we're managing it and running 40 on a and 562 on B isn't going to cut it. It's not just it's 40 and 89. 40 it's 40, and yes. And 40 and 94. And the most difficult transition on the planet is to take a dopamine dominant person like a fireman, policeman, special ops, football player. Yeah. And bring GABA up. They hate it. And it's fair to have the conversation that there has to be a balance in your brain between these two states. Right. And I understand you can't turn it off. But this is why you have a custom care. Right. And you come home from work and you have to be able to digest your food and sleep. Right. So you're for about two weeks between 7 p.m. and 6 a.m. when you get up, you're not going to like me. And I don't care. And it's like you say that out loud and they go, oh. 
okay, and this is what we need to do. You're now 32. Do you still want to be a police officer, fireman, football player? Not football player. That's not realistic. Fireman, police officer, when you're 45. Sure. Okay. Are you serious? Yeah. Okay. Do you clean your gun after you are on the firing range? Yeah. Do you clean and wrap the hoses after you do a run? Of course. Your body is like your gun or your fire hose. It has to be maintained. So we have the opportunity to have these come to Jesus conversations straight up. I, you said it last week. It's like you, the patient and you form a collaborative. Yeah. The patient has to know what the stakes are. Right. So at this point, you come home, your digestion sucks, your sleep sucks. You're fried by your two days off. You can't sleep. This is not sustainable. Right. My job is to keep you alive so that you can be a police officer when you're 45 and make detective. Right. So if that's what you want, this is the cost of the game. Right. What do you want? And don't you think that just what you've described, the management, like with me working with professional athletes, I feel like a manager. I have to manage so many different components in order for my treatments to be effective. And I think a lot of the time, whether it's an athlete or chronic pain patient, it doesn't matter. They're coming to you obviously for help, duh, but they're coming to you for a plan and to deliver that plan with confidence. So to your point, what you were saying is you're going to do this and this, and you're not going to like me and I don't care. And you see right away, there is that I may not say it in that form, but I'll just be like, you have to do this. Or this is what we're going to do. If you don't like it, you can see a different practitioner. Like I'm at that point where you're I'm like willing to be fired. Totally. Cause I'm and not going to waste my time or your money. Totally. And it doesn't matter if you've been practicing for three years or for 30 years. I think you deserve that as a practitioner. We take so much on all the time. And we're so good at telling our patients about the boundaries that they need to make in order for them to stay healthy. We need to follow the same rules. And this week I did, I fired a patient and, and it was fine because I was losing my mind trying to get this patient better. I really objectively wrote everything out. I clearly wanted the rehabilitation more than they did. They clearly weren't following instructions. They clearly were going to other practitioners that were doing harmful treatments that I clearly said were harmful. Well, I know who you fired. Congratulations. Dang. And it, and it didn't, it felt like just whatever. I didn't get excited about it. I didn't get emotional about it. I didn't feel sad about it, but I just don't need it as a practitioner anymore. And there comes a point when you have to say, this isn't working. It's not working for you. It's not working for me. It's, I feel just, no. Totally. And it's funny. And this is where we were such sticklers for charting pain before and after is they said, no, it totally was working. No, it wasn't because here on these treatments, like it was down and then it came back up. So it doesn't work. I have objective measures saying that my treatment isn't for you. And that's okay. Yep. And sometimes you have to have that conversation. We're all over the place with this introduction, but I wanted to talk about these back. We talk about treating things on the background. Sometimes I think we have to bring some of this stuff to the foreground because again, going back to the analogy of treating torn and broken before we can really release the scar tissue, these underlying, what's the word, these underlying pathologies are deserve to be in the forefront sometimes. And I just did this in the last five days. Yeah, it has been five days. He had scar tissue between the femoral plexus and the adductors, okay. which led to internal rotation of his femur, yep. which led to torn and broken 
in the connective tissue in the external rotators. Yep. So I had to treat 13 first and then torn and broken. Yes. And then, so he wasn't limping anymore, but his gait was not normal. He didn't move his arms. His legs weren't coordinated. Mm -hmm. Something wasn't right. So I programmed his custom care for hip pain and concussion in Vegas and the other stuff. Then we get out to the front desk because I kept asking him is what happened when this started? Nothing. It just my hips sore. Okay. So he's not extending into his hips. So it's clearly in the front. It's femoral nerve. We get out to the checkout desk and he said, I guess it all started three years ago when I fell and hit my head because when I watched him walk, it's, he has, it's not Parkinson's, but he doesn't move. He doesn't move his legs right. And his arms are, something's not right. And his right leg is the one that isn't moving. And I said, did you happen to hit the left side of your head? Because he went face plant. He said, I hit my right arm. And I said, that would have knocked you onto the left side of your head. He said, oh yeah, I guess I did have a cut. So here's his left sensory cortex. There's his right leg. So I said, hold that thought. I went back and I put sensory and motor coordination. I put coordination on his custom care. And I programmed trauma, increased secretions in the sensory and motor cortex with the instruction to put the contacts at his neck and his foot while he's doing his exercises to strengthen his glutes. And like his right hamstrings were gone, they just weren't contracting. Do it while you're doing your exercises and then you can do it while you're walking in the house. And that happened at the checkout desk. Of course it did, like, but at least you caught it though. Like what a critical part of his treatment to, to catch. And it's so interesting how the patients tell you these things. Like he could have not said anything and just paid and left. And he kept saying, it's like, something's not right with your gait. This is neurological. Have you had any head injuries? Oh yeah. And I'd asked him that in the room, but not in the right way. So talking about asking the questions and I've admitted this since day one, I didn't use the emotional frequencies for two years, the first two years, yeah. my brain couldn't go there. And I still was knocking treatments out of the park. So I was still doing a great job, but now I'm asking questions when people are telling me the history not, was it your left or your right? Or did that fracture? Do you have imaging? Of course, I'm asking those things, but I'm also asking or making a comment like, how did that make you feel? Or how did that affect you? And they're giving me better nuggets now. It was terrifying. I was so lonely. I felt abandoned. I had so much pressure on me. So I'm starting when I'm charting, I still chart with pen and paper and then I transfer everything over to my e-records. I just, I cannot get onto my stuff fast enough. I have to draw diagrams and I have shorthand and. My board actually said, as long as my handwriting is legible, I can have paper charts. Yes. And my, my, they're all single-sided. So my team in the office, when they have time, which is never going to happen, can scan them and upload them into the EMR. Yes. I'm fine. Yeah. So I have this new column that I'm writing feelings and emotions on. So those of us that practice with multiple machines, sometimes it's really easy to, we always talk about running something on the custom care that we don't have to think about and using the precision care for some of the MSK stuff. Sometimes I flip flop it. Sometimes I know they just need torn and broken, or they just need a little bit of scarring in the something first. And then I can use a precision care for some of the specific emotions, some of this, like, and that has been a bit of a game changer. That's a bit different than how I normally work with, but because of this month of 
anxiety and pressure. And I have to come back. I have to come back tomorrow and I have a race and I've and been more aware. Really important while you're on the emotional part to remember that at least in my world, I have confess to being neurocentric emotions do not come from space we we give them names like anger fear grief loneliness whatever but they all start in the midbrain and they all start with the midbrain being jacked up and terrified or activated let's use that word yeah activated about something so it's virtually all emotions start with 94 and the midbrain, 94 and 89 and 40 and 89. They all do. And in 94, depending. So you quiet down the neurologic amplifier for the emotion and treat the emotion on top of it. It's you would have been proud of me because I'm always proud of you. I don't share all the stories, but Going back to this one triathlete with this big race that's coming up, those of you who follow Ironman Sacramento was canceled last year because of, we had that freak, what do you call it? Atmospheric river. It was one of the biggest freak rainstorms Sacramento had. And to cancel an Ironman is a big deal. People train years for this race. My elite triathletes are always training, but when you get them all to the start line and they didn't cancel it right away, there was a, um, a group that were, should we cancel? Should we pull out? They were worried about their safety. There is so much fear imprinted with, do I race? And one of my patients made the call that she was going to pull out. And four minutes later, they called the race. So there's a lot of psychological build and energy attached to this race because these athletes, it's such a letdown, right? You train for so long to not be able to race and that training doesn't go anywhere. It's stored and it's built and, but there's a lot more energy associated with this race that's coming up. So one of my patients came in, we've been working together for years. Physically, she is in the best shape I've ever seen her in, but sleep is being affected. Digestion is being affected because of the stress leading up to this. So she's, listen, I always run concussion. It knocks me out or I'll use sleep protocol and knocks me out. It's not working right now, but never not works. Why isn't it working? What is standing in the way? And this is my new question that I'm saying to myself, what is standing in the way of these frequencies, these protocols working when they used to always work? And my thought was just the fear factor, right? The memory of the race being canceled, the fear of pulling out. And now you had this whole extra year to train. All eyes are on you to be that much better. Is it going to pay off? Are you going to do, do you know what I mean? Like all these things are going on. So we, I spliced in 40 and 89 before concussion for a little bit. And because her custom care is loaded with 40, like it's maxed. I can't add any more, nor can I take anything out at this point because all 45 are pretty great. I must say, but you have the ability to splice in frequencies. So just because you've got 45 doesn't mean it's locked and loaded. So I spliced in 40 and 89 before sleep before concussion. And then today I get the text, like I slept like a rock. I feel like a million dollars. I had the best run today, all these things. And on the amygdala. And so like, to your point, all like concussion always works, relax and balance always works, but sometimes it just needs, again, what's in the way of that. And it was the midbrain was having a temper tantrum. And Yes. Scenario, but same situation. I saw a patient that I saw in 2001. She had cervical trauma fibro in 2001. We treated her. I loaned her a home unit. She didn't use it. It was something about water and electricity. And she, I don't know. So she returned it and went back home. This time she'd had a crush fracture of her talus 
four or six years ago, developed CRPS. They finally, this year, the hardware was good enough. They did an ankle replacement. She came in a week ago, Monday, with CRPS in her foot, purple toes, purple foot, pain from the implant, and full body pain. Now she came in, just wanted the CRPS fix because she'd lived with her body pain at a seven for 22 years. So she was used to that. There's no way to treat CRPS without running 40 and 10. And then I had one machine quiet the spinal cord for central sensitization or spinal cord sensitization. But she'd chosen to be in pain for 21 years. So I had a second machine running 40 and 89 from neck to feet. And then this CRPS was just in the peroneal nerve. So it was from her knee to her foot. And what I found out about CRPS is it's complex regional pain, reflex sympathetic dystrophy, it's 40 and 396 to quiet the inflammation and activation in the nerve, but it's also the nerves disconnected. So I run two machines, one on 40 and 396 and one on 81 and 396 all at the same time. And CRPS was gone at the end of an hour. Her toes were pink, didn't hold, held for about four hours. The next day, same thing. And then the third visit, we had the conversation about you don't have to be in pain. You come in at a six and you think that's normal but your body doesn't, the digestion doesn't. She keeps exercising, which is why the fibro isn't as bad. But when you leave here with your pain at a zero or a one, you're different. It's, it, we have the ability to create an identity crisis that is unparalleled in medicine. And I will let you be in as much pain as you wanna be but I want you to be aware that it's a choice. You can, and her husband's sitting there and he said, cause she said, oh, we're gonna use my son's custom care and I don't think I wanna buy one. And her husband looks at me and says, money is not an issue, we can get it. And then I looked at her and I said, do you want to have your life back? So there are times when the conversation is part intuition on your part and knowing it's just 40 and 89 and you stick that in and you stick that in and it gets all better. And sometimes it's letting the patient experience the cognitive dissonance that happens when you, you just put it out in front of them right. and say, you can choose to have your life back. And the look on her face was, it gives me goosebumps. It's me too. Yeah. So we Thursday, so I saw her Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Thursday, I treated the scar tissue at the implant, the scar tissue in her foot, the scar tissue in her lower leg and the nerve 40 and 10 was easy peasy. And every day I ran concussion in Vegas. So every day she had five machines on her. I love that Ben Catholi wants one machine just doing one thing, but I have to multitask. Right. So Friday when she left, everything was gone. I worked right. on her neck, supine cervical practicum two days in a row, worked on the disc and programmed her custom care. They picked it up. I saw her on Monday. We finished it up. They picked up her custom care on Tuesday. And she said, this is a miracle. Look, I'm wearing my tennis shoes. I walked all over town. I have no pain. And 
told her about ketoprofen and lidocaine because her upper cervical facets are like this because she has a disc here and then just keep your nose horizontal and keep doing your exercises. And it, I love being us. Yes. And you said a word to just now and the word that I actually had circled in my notes is the word confidence. And that was the theme of the week. And I was more about all this stuff than I do, obviously, but like yeah. anxiety and confidence are like the yin and yang in professional sports. So when an athlete brings a lot of anxiety to, to me, to my treatment, it is my job to overload confidence. Sure. I'm not going to try to sell myself just it's just a presence that you have. It's a calmness that you have as a practitioner in your abilities of what you do. I always say I'm very good at my job. Nothing that you have scares me. This is nothing I haven't seen before. You don't have to promise them the moon or promise them whatever you're going to promise them, but it's your job when somebody is up here with the anxiety and the nerves to bring them down with confidence in your ability. And con and by extension, to reframe their situation for them, reframing is the other word, right? Reframe their situation for them. So they are confident. So how do you, how do you reframe it? So they, they understand the progress that they've made, right? And you take range of motion before the treatment and after the treatment. Right. Range of motion, pain scale. And when you have a brand new patient, you can story tell. You, everybody knows a patient like a patient. So when they're nervous on that first appointment, a lot of times they'll be like, oh, this is really similar to somebody I treated last year that went to the Olympics. Oh, right away. There's that. Oh, she's seen this before. You've seen patients with everything. So I'm sure you can draw upon that very easily. You're reading the chat right now. So we're going to okay. get to questions. <laughs> so, no, I know. You doing something shiny, but do you know what I mean? And one thing I want to touch on before it's gone out of my brain, because there's just too much in there right now after this past month is an, another C word and it's the control and the custom care gives patients control. It gives them something to help their pain, to help them sleep, to help them relax, to help them move better. And that in itself is immeasurable. Yeah. Like you, they have that tool. And so chronic pain athletes, people think, wow, you treat really different. The whole, the spectrum is so opposite. And I said, but they're actually very similar. They're both looking for control and to get their life back to your point. I sold four custom cares in the last six days because patients need control in their lives. Yes. And I don't want them to need me. Exactly. You shouldn't be the one on the button to the, I am booked into January right now. I can't have somebody call me and say, I need to get in tomorrow. But yeah. I can say, well, you have a program that might be able to help you. So why don't you start there? And if it's still not working, I can help you out. But let's just start with that. And well, nine times out of 10. With the new software. So easy. I, let me just fix it. This is, we just need to tweak this a little bit. And I think yes. it's help. Exactly. Yeah. The, yeah. the new software and the ability for patients to upload programs on the fly for me has changed my practice. Magic. Oh, yeah. It's, there's another conversation. I, and I do want to say something again before I, with this software sharing, I think it's important that because a patient can take their custom care to me, I can program it or send them the program. In theory, they can take that custom care to a different practitioner and that practitioner. And we've always, that's always been a risk that other practitioners can load it. <laughs> Just because my brain goes to I have too many friends that are lawyers, you have a section in the notes that when you're programming a patient's custom care, I'll always say I am programming CC 145 on this date 
with that program. However, I am noting that this, this patient sees another practitioner and the possibility of that practitioner loading something else. Just because I see athletes, I write everything specifically for them. So I think you have that section in the software to write notes. And I think it's important that you make notes of what you're doing and when you're loading it. Yeah. That's my like. And there is a, I got a text message from a a practitioner in foreign country, Bangladesh, India, someplace. And he said, I have a patient with erectile dysfunction. And there's this program on this automated unit. And it's one of the Chinese devices that is pre-programmed. Yes. And so he showed me the printout. It's all for the nerves. Mm. Erectile dysfunction is vascular. It's, there was zero in that protocol for the arteries or the veins mm. or increasing nitric oxide. Zip. It was all nerves and little drive-by on the testicles. That was it. And I said, no, this isn't going to help him. Sorry. And the person that wrote this program didn't know very much about erectile dysfunction or FSM. So sorry. Anyway, that was. That's your rant for the day. Yeah. So let's get to some Q&A because this hour is flying by. I got to get to Cynthia first. Do it. Do we need massage tables in Chicago? Chicago (laughs) is, we've got 30 people for two day practicum class. And Cynthia, I would love to see a twin. Erler's Damos has become like my favorite freaking thing to treat. Yes. And one of my patients came in who has Erler's Damos. And when her we treat the Erler's Damos, she gets pain at T12 to L2. She's got a tethered cord, which... Yeah goes with Ehlers Danos for reasons I don't understand. But we treated the tethered cord. And so now I know more about Ehlers Danos than I did before. And what I found out when I treated her tethered cord, so exciting. I ran one machine. I love that look on your face. (laughs) I ran one machine. I've never done this before. So I've been doing this for what, 27 years? And it's the first time, it's like, duh. <laughs> <laughs> scarring in the cord and scarring in the dura at the same time, both. Right. And rotation first. Yes. And then side bending. And yes. then the flexion at the diaphragm. And all of a sudden, her thoracic spine muscles started to contract. And her posture went from to normal. Wow. It was so, so yes, please bring your Ehlers-Danlos patient and rather severe doesn't even scare me anymore. As long as, well, and watch the Ehlers-Danlos webinar. Those of you that are coming to Chicago have already taken the core on video. So before you come to Chicago, go into frequencyspecific.com backslash webinar and watch the Ehlers-Danlos webinar. So you know what we're getting into because we're, we don't need tables. Kevin has shipped 10 tables for 30 people. So we're good with that. We're good to go. All right. Let's go back to the Q and a. Oh, Cynthia wrote, I showed her the webinar and she told me it changed her life. That's amazing. Yes. Your webinar, I think we should somehow pin it so everybody can see it because it is the best compilation of information on Ellers downloads I've ever heard. Yeah. So I, hats off to you on that one. And Vegas. Ehlers yeah. Danlos. Yes. Vegas and mold. I this is what happens when you lock me up in the house for two years with nothing else to do and no classes to teach. So I made webinars. Yes. And the best compliment I ever had ever from anybody in my life was when Neil Nathan said why do you want me to lecture about mold? Your webinar is better than anything I ever put together. Whoa. Yeah. Like. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, okay. You can go back to the questions if you want. Can I answer Dolly first? Sure. How do you increase nitric oxide with FSM? 
So nitric oxide is created inside the blood vessels, among other places. And what is it? It's based on reduced inflammation in the arteries and the veins. And then there's an endothelial lining in the arteries as, and I may be wrong, but I consider nitric oxide to be a secretion of the arterial lining. So you run increased secretions of vitality in the arteries and the veins. And, so, cool. and you run it the way we found out about erectile dysfunction was an accident. I had a, an associate that was treating somebody for diabetic neuropathy and she, he didn't want the towels around his knees. So she put it behind his low back and ran it down to his feet. Well, his diabetic neuropathy got better. And at the end of four weeks, he came in and said, by the way, my erectile dysfunction is gone. Wow. That's, oh, it's right. vascular. Makes so that's, sense. All right, Marty, what? What you guys run out? Uh oh. Questions. So uh, if out, we. If okay. So, Marty, normal pressure hydrocephalus. That's an oxymoron. How do you have hydrocephalus? with normal pressure because they met, did they measure the pressure in the brain or in the spinal cord? So yes, you have to keep the towels above the clavicle or below the waist. So normal pressure hydrocephalus, the, if you look at that diagram in the advanced that talks about spinal fluid flow, it's created in the ventricles in the middle of the skull. And then it flows around the brain and out down the spinal cord, back up the other side, and then up and around again. So hydrocephalus is when basically there's too much spinal fluid in the skull. And assuming the architecture of the anatomy is correct. Sometimes it's just like you've got hair in the drain. Mm. So if they're born with hydrocephalus, that's architecture. The drains are just too small. They don't work. Or the ventricles genetically make too much fluid. Can't get rid of it. But if it came on after some sort of auto accident, neck trauma, fall, you can get fibrosis or scar tissue at the outflow where the spinal fluid is supposed to exit the skull. So you can treat scarring in the dura, scarring in the meninges, all three of them, and see if that helps. And Kevin has a whole list of questions that came in on the internet. If we run out of questions before we run out of Time in nine minutes. <laughs> Hi, John. Hi, John. Aloha. Jet lag question. Do we have FSM help for west to east travel? My sense is we have east to west. That is the reason that I don't use the jet lag protocol because it's different if you're going west to east. So one of the, if you're going west to east, you have to knock yourself out early and get your adrenals to work early. If you're going east to west, it's the opposite. So the jet lag protocol, I think should have been removed from the custom care because it doesn't work. Yeah. Unless you're going a specific direction and you happen to use it the right way. So for my athletes that were traveling, it would, when they needed to sleep on the plane, it was concussion. And when they needed to wake up in the morning, it was brain fog. And that helped with all the Olympic games. And 81 and 71 increased yes. secretions in the adrenals. Yeah. Yeah. I see. And I use drugs. And of course, yeah. All so, the drugs are, these Olympians are tested all the time. So this was again, though, a great way of helping the anxiety because they had something natural to yeah. help knock them out and wake them up. And I even have that slide in the sports course because one of my hockey players that got a medal in Sochi, no, it was Pyeongchang. 
I would, he's, he wrote, I need to write you a testimonial. And I thought he was going to write about like this crazy road we were on getting him to the Olympics. And no, it was all about jet lag and all the stuff. And at first I was super disappointed. And I was like, no, this is performance enhancement at its greatest. The fact that he had something that could help him sleep yeah. and keep his immune system calm and wake him up naturally is that was a game changer. So, so with the time zone change, when you are going from the US to China, it's 12, 12, 11 hour time zone change. And it's not like they're going six months before the games, like they're going right before. It has to be, I won't travel to Europe or Asia or Australia unless I have at least three days. And in a perfect world, four days to adjust to local time. Is- Can I use this opportunity to say how excited I am that I've opened registration for Australia and Kona, and I already have two signups for Kona. So super excited to go to Australia. I've never been before, and what a great way. It's a year from now, actually. So come to Australia with us. It's going to be so much fun. And between the core in Sydney and the advanced, it's the first time I've had four or five days between classes. And I'm so much healthier now than I was in 2007, six, when I was flying to Australia. I want to go to the West side. I want to go to Ayers Rock. I've right. never been there. You want to come? I might be teaching the sports course, but when I'm not teaching, yes, I'm coming with you. It'll be fun. Have a good time. Of course we will. We have a good time here. Okay. Let's get to these questions because I have to go. Okay. Let's see. Misdiagnosed as Alzheimer's. I don't know. Denise, I've heard that NPH hydrocephalus, non-normal pressure hydrocephalus can be misdiagnosed as Alzheimer's. The only way you can diagnose normal pressure hydrocephalus is by doing a spinal tap and measuring the pressure. Hello. But Not on my scope. It's, yeah. And they, there you go. Marilyn Miller says it was 48 degrees this morning in St. Augustine, Florida. What program do you both use for your client notes? Pen and paper. <laughs> Say again. Pen and Pen paper. And paper. <laughs> yeah, with little arrows. Okay. So question. Flu respiratory 189 and 116 and 189 on point one. 189 is in the advanced. It's under the virus frequencies. So everybody needs to remember that there was an epidemic in 15, an epidemic in 1917, and then the pandemic was 1919. So the virus kept mutating. And these people that were working with frequencies came up with these frequencies for viruses. So on the advanced list, there's London flu, malignant flu, respiratory flu, and flu. So there are six, and then there's common cold and influenza frequencies. So there's six frequencies for influenza. And 189 is one of them. And 116 is the immune system. And the challenge with this novel respiratory virus that we've seen since 2020, is that the first thing it attacks is the immune system. Mm. It's the bone marrow. It hits the immune system first and goes, these are not the droids you want. This is not a virus. You've never seen me before. Go back to sleep. And so I put the immune system first and then point one is because the custom care can't run a zero zero. So all six virus frequencies are run by, as just the virus, and then all of the tissues, so organs, and then the brain, and then in long haul patients, the thing I'm having the most trouble with is the fatigue, and that's interleukin-1. That Mm -hmm. means that the immune system is still producing interleukin-1 to make you feel like you need to lay in your nest and be a sick mouse. So the, I've got a long haul patient coming in. She's a friend or a colleague from years ago. And I said, come in on Tuesday. We actually have a treatment room that we're not using. Come in on Tuesday, 
you park in a leather rocking chair recliner, cover you up with a fuzzy blankie, put you on a custom care, punch a button, leave the room, and we'll see what happens. And you can customize so the normal respiratory protocol does not include the does include the capillaries, but doesn't include the ethmoid sinus. So in people that have parosmia or lack of smell, you just go into the custom care and add the ethmoid sinus and take out the liver. The liver enzymes are normal now. That's not their problem. So take out the liver and just exchange liver for ethmoid sinus. Last question. And then we have closing thoughts. Okay. From the practitioner that sold me my unit, I've received protocols for Lyme, Babesia, Bartonella, and mold. Whoa, there's that. So Lyme, Babesia, Bartonella, and mold. Number one, if they're real. So patients come in and say, I have Lyme, Babesia, and Bartonella. How do we know that? They muscle tested me. Anybody do any blood work? Okay. No. Okay, so you need to go find somebody and get some blood work and tell me how many bands you have. FSM does not kill bugs. Right. Does not work by itself for any of those four things, Lyme, Babesia, Bartonella, and mold. It's an adjunct that changes cell signaling. Right. Oh, four o'clock. Yes. Uh, I have to go. What... I wanted to interject with quickly is for the FSM sports course in Arizona, the advanced FSM sports advance is halfway sold out already. So if people want to take advantage of the early bird special that is running until November 1st, you could sign up for both of them for a special rate or just the sports course for a discount. So I just wanted to interject that because as of November 1st, so there'll be still a little bit of time, but it's filling up. So that's fantastic. And then if you can't make Arizona, you can come to Kona. And if you can't come to Kona, well, you're just gonna have to go to Australia. There you go. And there will be no more FSM sports online training after it is done because it's a course that you need to be in person and you need to come jump off the tables and do cartwheels and all that stuff to really appreciate. You're just gonna have to come find us. That's all. We'll be there. We'll oh, be there next year. Yes. Okay. So how when's the early bird special for the advanced and symposium go away? December 31st? We've got ours until the end of the year. End of the year. Ours is okay. end of the year. First yeah. early bird. And we decided, so we're doing five day in person cores every other month next year. And then we decided we're going to do two day practicums for people that are still taking it online. Yeah. But we're going to do those practicums in Troutdale. You can fly to Portland. Yes. And I want to come. I want to do those. Wouldn't that be fun? Yes. Maximum of 12 people. That's perfect. It's going to be fun. So those, we'll get those on the calendar pretty quick. Awesome. Okay. What's your final, what's your, what's a good quote? You got one. You always have one. I do. And so this isn't like anything profound or unique or anything, but I wrote this to a practitioner that is going through a lot right now. We met two decades ago. And it, the advice came full circle. So I said, and we've heard this before, you'll forget people's names. You'll forget what they say to you, but you never forget how someone makes you feel. Oh, isn't that nice? And this person really helped me out 20 years ago and I'm trying to help them out now. So I'm getting all emotional today, but (laughs) and that's my closing thought. There was a quote that I heard in Germany. Mm. that when you say I love you to someone they actually have data that says that the microtubules in the cells harmonize organized I found myself people that I feel affection for yeah where you just are nice to them and whatever Mm -hmm. I find myself saying, I just love you. So that's my closing word I to you. you. I love I just you. Love you. I, See, and then I, you, I you feel know. that. I needed that today too. Yeah. 
And I recommend that everybody that's listening or watching look in the mirror. I dare you. That's the week's challenge. Look right. in the mirror and say, I love you. <gasps> All right. Just wrote it on the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write it in eyeliner. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin wrote it on the mirror. So but... you can read it. All right. Okay. That's the challenge for the week. We'll see you guys all same time, same place. See you in a week from now. Bye. Bye. The Frequency Specific Microcurrent Podcast has been produced by Frequency Specific Seminars for entertainment, educational, and information purposes only. The information and opinion provided in the podcast are not medical advice, do not create any type of doctor-patient relationship, and unless expressly stated, do not reflect the opinions of its affiliates, subsidiaries, or sponsors, or the hosts, or any of the podcast guests or affiliated professional organizations. No person should act or refrain from acting on the basis of the content provided in any podcast without first seeking appropriate medical advice and counseling. No information provided in any podcast should be used as a substitute for personalized medical advice and counseling. FSS expressly disclaims any and all liability relating to any actions taken or not taken based on or any contents of this podcast.